So because we're using Upload Care to upload and host our images, we're able to use their facial detection features, which might be useful for tagging people. So we're going to do that in this video. So to get started, we have to create a new database table to store all of the tags and their coordinates on the images. So the new model has the idea of the photo, the coordinates on the image that we got from Upload Care, the user who got tagged and the person who did the tagging. So of course we have to make migrations, then we have to run migrate and then we can run our server. So we're going to talk to Upload Care when we upload the photo and that's how we're going to use Upload Care to figure out the coordinates of people's faces in the photos. So what we do after we've detected the main colors is we send another request off to upload car to detect the faces. Then what we do is we start with a tag count of zero. We save the photo and we go through the data and we first check if there is faces that have been detected. If there's no faces that have been detected, then there's nothing to check. But if we find faces, we loop through all of those faces and we insert a tag into the database to say that we've tagged somebody or we found a face. So then we insert a photo tag with the photo ID and the coordinates on the image that we find the face. So we save that and we increase our tag count each time we find a tag and then what we do is we update the photo with the number of tags and before we run that we're going to go up to the top and we're just going to include our new model that we just created photo tag is what we called it and we're also going to go back to models and we're going to increase the length of coordinates in case we have images with really large coordinates involved so we're just going to double that to 40 so we're going to run make migrations just to increase the size of that column we're going to run migrate and now we're going to run the server and give that a go so i have a photo here i'm just going to upload that it's a photo of a face It's just a bit stretched out because the aspect ratio is weird. Uh, what I'm going to do is click save photo and you can see there is our photo loaded and we actually had our primary color in the background. So back in SQL Pro you can see if I refresh there is our photo and you can see we have one tag because we found a face in the photo. So what I'm going to do is click photo tags and you can see here is the coordinates of the face in the photo. So there was only one face in this photo so we only have one tag. If we had multiple faces we would have multiple tags. So now we're able to recognize faces using Upload Car. But before we go, we also want to be able to log out of our website because we don't actually have a logout function currently. So we're gonna create that. So to create that, we just have to create a URL called Logout. And I'm just gonna paste that up here. And we're gonna go back to views. And when we log out, it's really simple. All we have to do is create a simple view. And what we do is we just run the logout function that we got from Django and we redirect them to the home page. So that's us able to log out. Now, if I try this out, you can see now I'm logged out. So now we're pretty much finished our website. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to get it online. To get our website online, the easiest way to do it is to use Amazon Web Services. We don't need to use Amazon Web Services to serve our actual website. All the photos are taken care of for us using Upload Car, so we don't have to worry about that. But to be able to get it online, what we're gonna use is Elastic Beanstalk, which is a product from Amazon Web Services. So the first thing you have to do is install the Elastic Beanstalk command line interface. There's a guide here to install it. I'll leave a link in the description. So once you've installed that, you should be good to go. So before we're ready to upload it, what we have to do is go to our settings file. And we want to set the debug setting to false because we want to run it in a production environment. We want that to be false. What we're also going to do is we're going to scroll down and under databases, instead of using a MySQL database that runs on a server, we're going to use SQL Lite because when we deploy it to Amazon Web Services, it's much simpler than having them manage a separate database for us. So we're just going to keep it simple and we're going to use SQL Lite. So we're just going to uncomment that. And because debug is set to false now, just add into our allowed hosts, which we're just going to say localhost. So if I was to run this, we're going to get told that we have to migrate lots of tables. So if I close that, we want to do the migration, make migrations. Then we want to run migrate to move everything across. And now if we were to run the server, it would work as expected. So what we want to do now is we want to get the requirements for our project. We want to store them in a text file so we can say pip freeze. We run that, you can see it's going to tell us all of the requirements, everything that our project needs to run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say pip freeze and I'm going to send the output of that to requirements.txt. Then I'm going to make a directory that Elastic Beanstalk needs called .eb extensions. And I'm going to go into that directory and then I'm going to make a file called django.config. And I'm just going to paste this text in. This is just text that Elastic Beanstalk needs to be able to run our project. So we're going to save that and we should be good to go. So we're just going to go out of this directory and now we're going to use the command line interface to say eb init, which will do all of the hard work for us. So I'm going to pick a region. I'm just going to pick number four and we can create an application. So I'm going to create a new one. It's going to be called Instapick. I'm just going to choose the default. We just go through all of these options. We're going to choose number one because we chose to use Python 3.4 at the very beginning of this series just for this reason. So if I hit enter, I'm going to hit no. So we're going to type in EB create to create an elastic beanstalk environment. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it Instapick. We're going to call it Instapick again. For load balancer, we're just going to choose number one. So we stick with all the defaults and this should start uploading. 
and this will put our website online. And now you can see Elastic Beanstalk is doing everything for us and it's just telling us what it's doing. I could click Control C now and it would still keep doing it in the background. There's the CNAME record that our website's going to use. And initially the website's not going to work because in Django the only allowed host we have is localhost. So Django's not going to work. So we have to put in our CNAME record that we created. And we have to redeploy it after it's finished setting everything up. So you can see we're getting an error at the minute. So we just want to redeploy. So we say EB deploy and that should get everything working for us. So there's our deployment almost finished. So now you can see we have a fresh installation of our website and it's live on the internet. So there's no data yet. So I have to create a new account. But now you can see I have a blank account. I'm going to upload a photo. I'm going to give it a caption. And I'll give it a filter as well and invert it and I'm going to click save photo. So now you can see we have a live website running on the internet and you can see how easy it is for us to upload photos using upload car because it takes care of absolutely everything for us. So that's it for this series. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to go to upload car in the description and get your free account so that you can make the most of this series. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Reddit. But that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.